Hey folks, welcome to Live Chat with West Virginia Case. Tonight's guest is Bigfoot and UFO researcher Brian Seach. There you are. All right, Brian, I got you. Okay, folks, uh, we're uh, waiting for it to add, and Brian should be on here in, in a couple seconds. Still waiting, I still say adding. No answer. Okay. Brian, you were there and I added you, but I don't know where you went. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Okay, great. We got you now. Okay. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. How about you? Okay, great. Okay. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. How about you? I can hear you. You have to turn your phone at the vertical, Brian. Or... Is that good? Yeah, there you go. I got you now. You have to turn your phone at the vertical, Brian. Or... Is that good? Is that good? We... Yeah, we got you now. You have to turn your phone at the vertical, Brian. We got you a bunch of feedback. Is that good? Okay. Uh... Yeah, we got you now. You have to turn your phone at the vertical, You hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, that's good. I had to turn off. I was listening to it on the computer also. So as long as that's good. Yeah, I can hear you now. We can, I don't I don't hear the feedback. Okay, now. great. Yeah, um, for some reason, I've tried, tried it a few times. And when I tried on the computer for my, my, my West Virginia case, it took me right to uh, why it does that. Okay. So, so we had to do it on the phone for some reason. I don't know. It has something to do with Facebook, I guess. Okay. I can, uh, I can see your ceiling. I don't see no, you. okay. I'm, uh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been? I've been good. Long, long day today. <laughs> so I was outside all day working, um, mowed grass all for all morning, then went and, uh, rebuilt um the uh, basically the underside of a car hauling trailer uh, the all the saddle work and, and the bolts and springs and everything so i'm a little sunburnt and stuff mm -hmm. so um i want to thank you for coming on and i want to thank you know everybody else for joining us um so uh if you would like just tell us about tell us about brian right now well, uh, basically, my wife and I started our uh, organization, uh, Center for Unexplained Events, in uh, 1986. We started it out as a, how do you say it, as a clearinghouse for all unexplained material. Uh, Bigfoot, UFOs, mm -hmm. strange creatures, ghosts, anything in the paranormal realm, we started to, uh, basically, we started to collect articles and, um, you know, newspapers, magazines, books, um, we would record things on TV, anything about the unexplained. And um, being, you know, the first, probably for the first, though, from 86 probably to 2000, we didn't do a lot of uh, investigations because we, we have two, uh, we had two young kids growing up. As you know now, it takes a lot of your time. Yeah. And uh, so basically in 2000, we joined the PA Bigfoot Society and we uh, uh, started. Uh, investigations with Bigfoot and uh, later on we joined UFON. Um, we were both members for several years. Um, my mm -hmm. wife was actually state section director for about two or three years and um, we did, did get out of UFON. Uh, we still do some little bit of UFO work when we get them, uh, when we get some uh, 
you know, whenever we get any uh, reports. Uh, we started our new, uh, I know you wanted to know a little bit about our new project, our uh, uh, light anomaly exploration. Um, uh, yeah, I'm interested in that. Yeah, please share that. Well, basically what it is, is uh, roundabout in a nutshell, is we have a frequency machine, which we had a, uh, it's a frequency machine with an add-on. It's kind of a plasma device also, and we use it to amplify uh, frequency signals to uh, the, the signals go out, you know, out to the space and in into the air. And uh, we're, we're kind of using them to see about some of these, we call them light spheres, some call them orbs, okay? Right. We're using it to see if we could somehow, if this somehow influences uh, seeing some of these things. Um, uh, there is more to it that that's just a real simplified thing. We're looking at other things in conjunction with it, uh, like space weather, weather, moon phases, things like that. We, we believe right. uh, geomagnetic storms. Uh, well, right. what, what, what I do believe in is some of the phenomena that's being seen may be influenced by some of these, you know, by especially geomagnetic storms. Um, do these events happen and then they're, and then you do see these, uh, whether they be light spheres or, uh, maybe Mothman, uh, Dogman, all the, mm -hmm. the other creatures that we also research. So we're trying to, it's a very slow process actually. We started about a year, a little over a year ago. But uh, as you know, I believe, I, I've told you we have moved since then. So we right. moved and we're actually running running a place right now. So it's been about six months. So we're still living out of, <laughs> living out of boxes. So we're not, uh, unfortunately, we're not as prepared to, you know, to go fully with it. I mean, we're still doing it, but it's been a lot slower. Uh, with the housing market the way it is, it's very hard to find anything. So oh, yeah. once we do, once we get it, we can all get situated. We are going to uh, be doing a lot more than what we are with it now, but we are still doing just very slowly. Okay. Do you, do you feel that, I mean, the, the, what you're doing, is it, you, when you said Mothman and light spheres and uh, spheres and stuff like that, do you feel they, that this energy or, or you know, the, whatever you're, you're looking into is causing that or is possibly some of the stuff is feeding from it or how, what, what, what is the, the basis of it? Well, I've always, you know, with some of these strange, stranger creature reports, some people, some even, some would even throw Bigfoot in there. I'm not so sure about that, that, uh, you know, possibly let, let's say, you know, some people claim that, you know, maybe big Bigfoot is interdimensional. If it is, or say a Mothman or Dogman, does there have to be some kind of an energy transference? Now, you know, we talk about some people right. have talked about ley lines and uh, right. power energy sources, portals, uh, windows, however you want to say it. Do they open just randomly? Does there need to be a some kind of an energy transference before some of these creatures and or entities or take your pick, right. even goes to that matter? Does there need to be an energy transfer for these things to come in and out? And that's what we're kind of looking at. We're trying to see, hey, are there certain factors? Say, is there a geomagnetic storm along with regular earth weather or maybe a moon phase, things like that? I think there may be, I think there's a lot more to some of these sightings and just say hey, these, you know, some of these creatures, whatever they may be, are just out there. I think, and I don't know what, okay? Again, I'm not saying I know exactly what's going on and I don't. Even after, you know, these years researching it and talking with a bunch of other, you know, researchers, you know, Fred Saluga is one who, who believes, you know, these Bigfoot creatures are interdimensional. And we've known Fred probably for 15 years. We research with him. So my basis on some of this is um, if these creatures, no matter what they are, if they are interdimensional, is there an energy transference? And can we, can, can you actually find it or is if you can find some common threads, then that'd be really interesting. It's kind of a little bit different way of looking at a lot of these phenomena, but uh, I, I think it's it's interesting. It's it's really not really not being done to that effect. You know, with Bigfoot, as you know, you you know most people are out there looking for you know, hey, this creature just may be nothing but an uh, ape in the woods. Um, right. Uh, again, we don't know what it is. I mean, I know some people, you know claim they have all the answers but we don't know what a bigfoot is and yeah um i, I keep my mind open and i mean i'm still i i still you know like on, on 
if I'm on the fence, I'm still maybe slightly over, slightly over that it is a physical creature. But mm. man, there's there's doubts in my mind, and I just don't know. I'm trying to look at it uh, from every other angle. I think there's enough researchers out there looking at it uh, from hey, it's just a an ape type creature. Now we now yeah. at our group, the Center for Cryptozoological Studies, we still are a cryptozoological group. We are looking for a physical animal okay we're looking for physical right. traces these creatures leave that that's science you have to you still have to do science with and you know use use that but again i don't know what you think about it but it, it seems like man we're missing something oh i'm i'm right there on the fence with you i i like i'm like you i kind of lean toward that physical thing you know it, it being a physical being but there's just so many strange things that go on mm -hmm. with with these sightings with some of these sightings you have to to me you have to step on that side of the fence at one time or another and, and check it into check into it and when you're talking about the energy sources that was another thing that is always and you know had, has been an interest to me because you hear from some witnesses whether it's the paranormal whether it's been bigfoot or something or, or, or ufo or something like that You'll hear some of the stories where they talk about either a buzzing, a cracking, or a popping, or right before they have their experience. And I've always wondered, is that something that that's caused a physical, you know, reaction, or is it actually some kind of energy that's opening up to, to, you know, for this thing to step through or or, or whatever to manifest? And so I've always been interested in that. That's why when I remember you talking about that. The, the last Q meeting, yeah, I was I was pretty fascinated with it. And again, I think no matter what you do or what you research, take that step outside of the box. Just try something a little different. Yeah. Um, there's a, like I said, there's there's a most of the organizations out there looking at the phenomena like it, you know, from one way, and uh, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think I don't. I don't right. I'm getting a lot older now, but a lot slower, less, and I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to just duplicate everyone else's efforts. I want to try to do something a little bit different. Um, exactly. Down the line, I, I think also with the uh, with the portals uh, opening and closing, I, I would like to do more with something like on that also. I just think that there's so many different things out there to, to do, to research, even just like uh, local folklore, things like that. We did the, uh, uh, there's Crawford County is a couple counties up from us and they have things, uh, they have the uh, Geneva Swamp Turtle supposedly a huge mm -hmm. turtle um they, they also have the the pig people of meadville and just like local folklore things like that there's so many different things and that, that you could actually do and research in all these fields and uh luckily we work with a lot of other groups too and uh fred being one of them fred's groups um dan hegman boru uh dave and carrie rupert uh, so mm -hmm. many different other groups that we also work with who they're very open-minded. Uh, but I, I, I believe you could be open-minded, but you don't have to 100% believe the phenomena. You're open-minded. You, you, all you're trying to do is trying to find information, and that's what we do. We archive, we archive news, you know, newsletters, things like that. We have a huge archive. Yeah. Um, it 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 was really impressive when it was uh, all in my basement. <laughs> it's not as impressive <laughs> in boxes, scattered. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so. Um, once we go somewhere and uh, we get everything together, we'll have to have you up and take a look at it. Yeah, I was uh, I was a little sad because you invited me up once and I was unable to make it, and I was a little sad that I didn't get to see the uh, the S files before <laughs> it was bought. Yeah, we will. Uh, we were just like the six million dollar man. We will rebuild it and make it better than it was. <laughs> awesome. So, if you started in 1986. Is that was there a catalyst that got you? You know, was there a reason why you got started, or is just it was an interest you always had, and you just said, "Hey, let's start doing this with you and Terry." Well, basically, at the time we uh, we were uh, we were married in '85, and in '86 I worked at a local Kmart up here uh, in Moon Township, and I met a gentleman named Dave Mon, who sadly he passed away last year. Uh, and I, I don't remember how we went to lunch. We were working. We went to lunch, and we somehow started talking about UFOs, and and I don't remember how we got to start it on that subject, but he said he had a low-level encounter in Cranberry Township in the 60s. And he said uh, that this craft hovered over the car 
there was four of them in the car. They stopped the car. They ran out and they hid behind this, uh, I guess it was like a big hay bale. Uh, mm -hmm. And this creature hovered over the car and then it shot off. And he had given me a picture of how the, and, and again, it's in these files somewhere, of how the paint was red paint. It, the paint was peeling and some of it was turning orange. And uh, since and we and I and I we talked with him. I says, "Hey, why don't we get like a little study group going?" It was my wife and I, Terry, and Dave Mon and our son Sean. So we we got like a study group together, and we start watching. You know, we start collecting articles, and that's that was kind of the catalyst of it. Um, you could just talk, you know, at, at lunch talking about UFOs with somebody you just work with. It was it was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of how I mean, yeah, it's kind of how a lot of us got started. You know sharing sharing our stories you know when we get to talking to like-minded people i mean that's how i met a lot of the folks i know and uh, you guys included and fred and all you guys you know just finally gravitating to like-minded people you know if after years of you know as a you know a teenager and then later on as a young adult when you know you work with some folks and they're like oh no yeah and then it was great to find somebody eventually to talk to you. So I, uh, I, I really think that's cool that, you know, you was able to, you know, actually find that person that just got you, you know, into doing mm -hmm. it all. Uh, so what out of, out of everything you've, you've studied and everything you've researched, is there, is there anything that's been your, your, I guess, I don't want to say favorite. I mean, but that thing that you really are drawn to. It'll, it'll probably always still be Bigfoot. Although right now I'm, I think I'm going through about a bout of Bigfoot burnout actually, but the subject okay. still, since you know since I was a little kid watching uh, In Search of and all the uh, the, the, the documentaries in the 70s, uh, Boggy Creek, you know the you know the ones, Mysterious Monsters right. is actually the one that actually started me on it. Uh, so that was, it was all. It, I think it will always be Bigfoot, but 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 after that is is probably. All the other cryptids combined, like Mothman. I was always interested in Mothman as a kid. I remember reading that first article about Mothman and envisioning the uh, Linda Scarberry and them driving into Point Pleasant as this creature is gliding alongside of them at 100 miles an hour. And I was like, wow, that, that just got me hooked. Um, there's just so many, so many great mysteries out there. And you know, because you, you know, you're out there doing it also, like all the other groups we work with. Um, and it would be great to get answers. Okay, but you know, deep down, I'm like, you know, unless I hit a Bigfoot coming home from work or something and throw it on top of my car, like here, I, I don't believe Bigfoot is going to be um, ever solved. I mean, right. I I I, I kind of hope yes, and, and kind of hope no, because I think as human beings, I think we need that mystery. We need that monster right. in the woods. We need something in the sky. We need we need to not know everything. If that makes sense, I mean, yeah. Well, if 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 it's ever found, what would you, I mean, that's going to collapse a, a big, you know, to me, a lot of people, it's going to collapse a field of people that's been researching for years. What do you think would be the next step? I mean, or the next one that people will gravitate to if it's not Bigfoot? One of the hottest ones right now is still, I think, is Dogman. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Dogman phenomena of uh, me and Fred and uh, Terry, we start researching this in uh, 87. Or excuse me, not 87. Uh, 2007, okay, uh, with a case that we got in uh, uh, around Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, where our friend Jody Cook introduced us to this this lady who claims that she saw one crossing the road. So Jody hooked us up, and we went up and uh, checked it out. And this creature, it was probably, I think, 1 or 2 in the morning, and she was driving home. And this creature moved from left to right, and she said when it ran across the road, it almost looked like she said it almost looked like the creature from American Werewolf in London. And I know you probably saw that. Pretty much <laughs> everyone here probably saw that. I love that movie. She said it had splotches. You could see fur, but you can also see uh, splotches of skin, almost like it was changing as it was crossing the road. And interesting, it ran right towards uh, and on the side of a, uh, uh, like a, like a small power plant, a small energy uh, power plant. Right. And that theme would be a, a, a sorry a power station like a substation that theme we would see that again in a couple other cases that there was some yeah. kind of a uh, there was electricity involved the case up in newcastle where a mother and daughter were walking 
and they would do their walking by a, uh, a cemetery, a huge cemetery. So there, there were storm clouds coming, and the, and the mother and daughter, the, the, the daughter decides, hey, I'm just going to go in the car and wait for you. And the mom says, hey, I'm just going to take one more quick walk around the cemetery, and then I'll be back. Well, storm clouds started to come, and then there was uh, lightning, so, you know, a lot of lightning in the uh, in the clouds. And the daughter, when she was in the car, she claims this small as about four foot tall. It was like a wolf-like creature walking on two legs. Mm -hmm came up to the car and was walking around the car. They had the dog, there was a small dog in the car and it was growling and barking. And just, it, it went around the car and just as it, uh, it was on to the other side of the car, the mom came over the hill and it just walked back into the woods. And the daughter was, you know, she was, you know, yelling and she was hysterical. Well, she, we actually know this person. They actually called us and we went up there and checked it out. This was about a week later because by the time we got it and everything. And, um, uh, of course, you know, we didn't find any evidence, but uh, again, in another another one we got in Westmoreland County where this gentleman was driving down the road and he sees this creature. It was on uh, it was on two legs. It was a wolf-like looking creature, almost like an upper, upright wolf is what he said. It was on it was on two legs, uh, dropped down the four, ran across the road, and there was a, a fence for this substation. And there was like a mm -hmm. dugout hole, and it just went under the hole. And into the sub substation, and he was—he obviously he drove past it pr pretty quick, but he saw it go into there again. Why was this? Why would a wolf-like looking creature want to go towards a sub power substation and go underneath? It made no sense. So there may be with the with the dogman phenomena, maybe there is some kind of energy transference for, for somehow these things to actually be there. And researcher named Barton Nunnally, i know you heard heard of Barton uh, out of Kentucky. He had a, a a sighting. He talked to the eyewitness who claims it was a it was a hot summer day and this farmer was in his field and he sees a shimmer. Okay, and it would sort of be like when you're driving down the road when it's real hot and you look into the distance right. and you see that shimmer. He said there was a mm -hmm. shimmer and he said this dog-like creature on two two legs went came through it and it like looked both ways and it kind of sniffed in the air and then it saw the farmer and then it stepped back and vanished. To me, you know, I'm no scientist, but it almost sounds like there was some kind of a, a window or door, and it went, it came in, it was seen, right. and it went back, it went back in. Again, this isn't a very popular thing to talk about, so, yes. especially with any kind of cryptid. I mean, if you say it, they're going to label, they right. label you, you know. Uh, that's why we right. kind of don't really fit. We've never really fit in that in any one category. Our, our organizations, yeah. and, and I'm fine with that because, uh, you know, I just think you have to keep your options open. Uh, not necessarily right. believing in everything, just keep your mind open. Yeah, yeah you have to. Uh, that, you know, just, I've told people the same thing. You know, they ask me, you know, what do I get into? And I'm like, anything that somebody has to tell me, I'll listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about, you're just talking about, look, it seemed like a door opened up and that thing walked in or walked through. I had a Bigfoot report come to me, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago. And I don't remember all the exact details, but I remember the guy said he was coming down the road. It was like on the street. Mm -hmm. And he was nearing a stop, a, st uh, a street light. And as he comes near that street light, his car quit. And then he saw this creature come up near across the, like there's a ditch or bank or whatever. As it come up, the street light went out his you know his car had already shut off the street light went out he says he could feel like a vibration through the car hmm. and then when this thing walked across the road and he described it what everybody describes as as a sasquatch bigfoot you know looking you know the bipedal the you know, the ape characteristics man characteristics both you know combined and he says it walked off the road there was a wood line and it didn't walk into the wood line it almost just like dissipated and faded away and then after that happened the street light comes back on and this car started again is that i mean is that a, is that a true story he, he seems sincere but i you know I, i'm not sure but he, he seems extremely sincere to what he saw so there's you know when i hear those and hear other ones you know different things like that i have to look into you know to me i have to look into yeah. it i can't just say oh it's an Nate, it's Nate. I want to be, I want that, you know, I want it. I want my mind to, to say, yeah, this is what it, it definitively is, but I, 
because when I hear those things and I, and I, and it, it kind of breaks my heart when you have folks that'll say, no, there's no way it's anything other. Well, let's, let's put, let's all get together and express or share what we have heard and what, and maybe we can pull those, those two, those other, those differences apart. Maybe they're not the same thing. Maybe it is a different, you know, yeah. creature. And we don't know. And, I agree. And, I agree with you. We just, I think there's so many, there may be so many different kinds of creatures, entities that we just don't know. They may, they may look similar, but there's different properties of them. Again, I, I, I honestly just tell people, I don't know. Uh, and when I tell people or I'm giving a presentation, I say, Hey, I, we just got this report. We got this report. This is what they saw. Okay. They saw that I have to repeat what they saw I, right. as, a, as a, being a true and honest researcher. If they said that this thing floated and we, there's been a couple uh, cases in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, which, you know, Paul Johnson, who we work with, he's kind of like, he's like Terry and I's mentor, uh, even Stan Gordon. He's, he's had some of these cases where these, you know, in this case, Bigfoot, they've done some non-traditional things with a regular. So what do you do if you believe that Bigfoot is just the, a sap, you know, a flesh and blood creature, you're going to just say, uh, that, that person's crazy. You're just going to conveniently put them in the, uh, you know, the trash file. I don't think that's, again, again, you could, people can do what they want, but we don't operate like that. Uh, are there crazy people out there? Oh, of course, telling stories that we know that you kind of get a sense of yeah. that. You kind of get a sense who's, you know, try, trying to, trying to get one over on you or, Actually, some of these people actually do believe, no matter how crazy it may sound, yeah. they believe 100% what they saw. And is it misperception? You know, you can yeah. normally tell. You, you know, if you do this a while, you can kind of, kind, you know, kind of tell. We, we have a pretty big uh, reporting form, and I don't know if I showed you, that um, we try to have people fill out. And it's about, it was invented right. by Paul Johnson. It's about 45 or 46 questions. We actually added to it. Right. And... To me, if somebody is going to spend all that time, you know, filling that out, we also try to have the uh, eyewitness draw what they saw. Very important to us. Um, we actually got a really good, we just got a uh, report from uh, Venango County. And the lady drew the creature from the from the backside. And it was really impressive. I guess she, she saw it real quick and it just turned, turned around like it wasn't really worried about her. And it just went, so, you know, went off into the woods. Now, that was last year. Excuse me. We hope to get up there real soon because she's claiming that she's hearing wood knocks and things now from the same place we saw it mm -hmm. last year. So again, we do get big, we, we don't get a lot of Bigfoot reports anymore. Um, okay. Just there's so many other organizations out there. They just, they get them. And, uh, but we, we really love to get the, uh, the, uh, the oddball, like the, we did get a, a gargoyle type creature report at the Butler conference and I have to contact her she just filled out one of our short forms and go through some stuff. And I guess she saw it. They were driving, I guess it was between Fayette County and Westmoreland along the road there. I, don't, I forget the number, 910, I forget what it was. But they looked up and they saw there was this big billboard and they saw this creature with a big head and it had claws mm -hmm. hanging on top of the, of the sign just looking at them. Mm -hmm. And my wife was actually there. I was out wondering during the conference. And uh, they came to her and they told her and they said that they, when they saw the picture of the Chikar, Chikora gargoyle, and I think you've seen that drawing before, they said that's, that's what the head looked like. They didn't see the body. They said that's what the head looked like, kind of like an aero, you know, aerodynamic bicycle helmet. So, again, that's another one. I have like three I have to follow up on. We've been busy with a bunch of other things, but uh, I hope to f be, f you know, c following up on. And yet the other one was, was from Beaver County. It happened about, I think, two years ago, and we actually know that eyewitness personally, so we can call her in at any time. So those are the three we just recently got. So. Um, and talking about the um, the uh, the power stations and stuff like that, I, I was recently with some folks that are they're doing, you know, filming a little documentary, and then they're talking. They're they're it's brought forth in the documentary about how UFOs seem to be, um, a lot of sightings come around power stations, power mm -hmm. lines, you know, you know, substations yep. and stuff like that. Uh, do you, do, have you heard a lot of that about, you know, about things like that? There's, there's been, there has been a lot of, uh, uh, 
UFO sightings around around power lines, things like that. And I know Fred would be the uh, the actual one to who would know a lot more than that about those. But yeah, I mean, you can even look back in the '70s at all the uh, uh, articles, like you know, UFOs hovering above nuclear power plants and things like that. So mm. again, do they use it for energy? Uh, we also got a, like a, a winged entity report, believe it or not, this is about three years ago out of Idaho, believe it or not, guy contacted me. He says this, this winged entity, this creature, was flying alongside of a, uh, a power line. So again, mm -hmm. is there, I mean, boy, it's, there's just something about some of this stuff. It's, if it's transfer of energy, can they come in, can they you know, phase in and phase out? I don't know, right. but man, there's, there is, there are some sightings like that. So what do you do with those? Throw them away? I think you got to research them as best you can, take into every account, and just and just, just do your best with them. And to me, I, I have no qualm on either side. I'm not out to push an agenda. I don't care. I don't care if people believe what I do or believe what we do as an organization. I don't. It's it's about the phenomenon. I mean, this, the phenom I always tell people the phenomenon is going to be what it is. It's not going to be what you want it to be. Right. And you're, you're correct. I mean, you can't just throw those away because how many times in, in your research, you know, I've not been nearly as long into it as, as you, you and Terry and Fred, but how many times in your research have you got that strange, that one strange encounter, whether it's got some aspect to it, it's extremely just off the wall. And you're like, okay, let's put that aside. And then you might be a year or two later and, or, or, or so, and you get another one and you're like, wait, I remember that. I remember that from another one. I remember that from that's, a couple years ago. That's what's that's what's really that, exciting to me. Yeah. Like, here, here's the one here. That uh, the Chicora gargoyle. Okay, 2011. Mm -hmm. It happened in Butler County, and uh, we we investigated the one case with Dan Hegman. He was the main main researcher on the Butler gargoyle. So, when I saw that drawing, I saw that drawing on online. I got goosebumps up and down my arm. I says, I have seen this. I have seen this picture. I have seen the damn drawing. So I'm like, where, I have this. And I said, I have this drawing somewhere. So I was thinking about yeah. it and I was thinking about it. And I'm like, damn it, I know where it is. So I look back, I had the, an old uh, Bigfoot newsletter because we collect all those too. Uh, uh, I forget the name of Bigfoot News or something like that. Uh, by a gentleman by the name of Billy Green up in, uh, he doesn't do it anymore, up in, uh, I think, New England. So I'm looking through there and I'm like, Damn, there it is. And I'll show you next time I see you. You might even have seen it on my Allentown, Pennsylvania, 1993. Same damn drawing. Yeah. And the really cool thing about this is at the very bottom, there was a lady's name and her phone number. So I'm like, and this was, you know, 93. So I probably, so 2011, 93, 2011. So I, I'm like, is there any chance that when I call this lady, that's the right number and this is who it was? And I called her, and it was. It was like I hit the lottery. And I asked her about awesome. the. I asked her about the, the sighting. It was actually, it's actually a third person. So basically, mm -hmm. the mom's son's friend. Saw it. Right. So the son's friend told the son. The son do the son, drew two depictions of it. And they said the the one. This is the one that it looked more like. Okay. And it right. was that Chakora gargoyle reversed. It was reversed. I'm like, in a court of law, that's the same creature. And I got, and that, I was like, that to me, that was like hitting the lottery. How many people had that newsletter and said, hey, 93, 2011, same creature, same creature. Right. And Jody Cook got another one from, oh boy, I think it was 2002 out of Ohio. Um, I forget where we're at in Ohio. I mean, I do have the drawing. It's the same thing also. It's turned around mm. facing the other direction. You put all three together, and I've shown it in my presentation. Uh, I have a presentation uh, called uh, Winged Entities from Antiquity to Present Day, and it shows all this. It's really, it's really interesting. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to give it here sometime. But uh, I gave it to well, I gave it to Mothman. I don't know if you were there a couple yeah, months ago. Yeah. Were you there? Yeah, I was there. Did you yeah. see? That, that was it. And um, yeah. so, again, three different places, same creature. So to me, it's like, you know, does somebody, you know, is somebody just copying somebody else's drawing? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. So that's, that's what happens when you get those reports. And we also got uh, where uh, a Bigfoot, we call Whitey, 
because it's pure white, okay? We, it's been seen in Beaver County, it's been seen in Columbiana County, and it's also been seen in Hancock County, West Virginia. In that big triangle, right. this white Bigfoot is being seen. So I talked to a gentleman who saw this creature down in Beaver Creek, talked to another person right across the border, um, and you'll be, sometime I'll tell, I'll, I, I, will, I can tell you who it is. You may be shocked. You may be even talked to her before. Right across the, from Beaver, in Beaver County. So they wanted to meet. We, had, we, could, we could not be there because we had a couple prior commitments that weekend. So we set them up and they met and they said, it's the same creature. The one lady in Beaver wow. County saw it, I believe in three times over 20 years. And uh, the gentleman saw it once in Ohio. And, and if you would put the back of Beaver Creek to the back of uh, uh, Beaver County, it's not that far. Where she saw it and where he saw it, not that far, as the crow flies, they say. But it, it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it, there's just so many just interesting things. I could talk for hours and hours on, on all of this. Stuff. That, that's, that's pretty, that's kind of funny because I was going through some stuff today and, and I was looking through some, some, some of my files and one of the, one of the things that I read into that I had was a white Bigfoot sighting. And I believe it was in Wyoming County, West Virginia. Okay. And, uh, it, I don't remember how old the, the, the ladies or how long it was that she said it was, but, uh, her and her family were out hunting for morel mushrooms and they kind of fanned out and whatnot and she said she started smelling this odd smell like very pungent very strong and when she was looking around to see if she see anything she didn't see anything so she moved a little bit more and the smell got stronger and that's when because she was looking at the ground so she's seen in morels and that's when she noticed at the bottom of this tree because i don't know if you ever hunted morels oh. or not but uh, a lot of morels are found around elm trees and and, and you know, mostly a lot of dead elm trees okay. and, uh, you know, poplar trees and stuff like that. But she was looking and she said, that's when she noticed around on each side of this tree, there were, she seen big white feet and toes, like, like furry sticking out the edge uh, around the both sides of the tree. And she looked up and this thing, she said it was kind of matted and dirty, but it was white color. And it ha was leaning out from behind the tree and looked at her. And she didn't, she didn't know what to do, but just run. And, but I don't think she, I don't believe she put in the report she ever seen it again. She saw it that one time. And I, I believe it was in Wyoming County. Yeah, there's, there's, so, there's there, if you look into it, there's more white creature sightings than what you think. Especially, yeah. you know, Beaver County, Columbiana County, and then it's kind of like that triangle there. I, I can't explain it. It may be some of the most highest concentrated sightings of white creatures in the country. I, I'm not sure, but... I think we've actually done seven or eight of them, and I think there was about 11, 11 in those three, three counties. And uh, even in 1973, Stan, in our county here, Beaver County is where we live, there was a sighting of a, uh, there was a, there were some lights in the sky. And these two, three girls were at a, a bus stop, and they see this white Bigfoot in the woods holding a white sphere in its hand. So... They ran in to tell the dad. The dad runs into the woods. They said he comes back about an hour later, believe it or not, and his whole outlook and everything changed. He wouldn't talk about it. He was talking about like the end of the world. It really messed him up. So, again, wow. high strange in this case. Yeah, I mean, white Bigfoot. Yeah, they're they've been seen, and I can't explain it. You know, albino. I don't know. We actually got a. In almost every description, the creature was about seven foot tall, except for one, which was in uh, Lawrence County. This, this guy was fishing outside of Cascade Park in the creek, and he feels like he's being watched. So he looks across the creek. He's, he's this four foot tall, white Bigfoot. It's four foot. It's a small one. And he says, this creature was real. He says, the wind started blowing. He could see the fur blowing with it, with the wind. And he said they stared at each other. He says he doesn't remember how long. But it seemed, you know, it seemed because it seemed like it was a long time. But you know, if you see something like that, you're you're totally fixated on it. And he said it just slowly walked walked into the woods. And he, of course, then he got out of it. I, I find that interesting. You talk about it being four foot tall, because 
a lot of people think that these creatures are, you know, it's just like a generic, you know, size. They're all seven, eight feet tall, right in that range. But they're, if they're not, you hear a lot of, you hear a lot of stories of some that range just around five, six feet. And then you'll hear a smaller one, you know, but I, I try to, t you know, express to people, you know, just because it's not seven or eight feet tall does not mean it's that one of these Bigfoot creatures or not. I mean, you, you, I mean, like, for example, Pennsylvania, you have what the Alba oh, Twitch? Is that yeah, what's from Rick, Rick Fisher had? Yeah, he saw something like that. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's pretty much what four, they usually say a four yeah. or five foot yeah. hairy something. Yep. Um, as far as the uh, okay. Let's jump to the wing, the wing creatures here. As far as the wing creatures, how many, how many out there are out there that's really notable uh, across, you know, with actually within the United States? That is that whether it's like, I mean, we know the moth, moth, man. moth man. Um, oh shoot, um, uh, I can't remember the visitor. Um, oh, the Van Meter visitor. The, yeah. yeah, Van Meter. Uh, we have a what creature other? called. Uh, in Ohio, it's called the Freedom Demon, and it's the Freedom, the Freedom Demon. Demon. Nick, uh, it's from Freedom yeah. Township, and the interesting thing about that, it is right next to the Ravenna Arsenal, which was a, an old World War II munitions plant, which is now used as like a National Guard. Hmm, old, Same old World War II power plant? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Van Meter Visitor. It was yeah. by a, what, a, a mill, an old mill? Old oh, mill or mines. Yeah. yeah. So, again, I mean... Yeah, Jersey Devil. Thanks, Rich. Rich Washington. Yeah. Uh, Jersey yeah. Devil. We also have the Chikor Gargoyle, uh, uh, Freedom Demon. Uh, a gentleman, I think he passed. Uh, he had a creature called the, uh, uh, what was it called? The, uh, the Flyer down in Florida. It was a okay. creature down in Florida. Uh, they, uh, the, there was the Houston Batman. There was, I'm just trying to think of some of the ones from my presentation and these wings, entities, whatever we call it, we just call them entities. We don't know what they are. Some call them wing humanoids. Right. Um, you know, you had Pazuzu, the demon, you, you had all these, these winged entities from, from, you know, from even from old times, these creatures with, uh, uh, River Ridge puts again out of Chicago, the Chicago Mothman's, uh, I'm going to not say much about those. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't put a lot of credence to those. I, I yeah. really don't. And um, and I know a lot of researchers have also looked into it. They agree with me. So out of respect, yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I just don't believe, I wanted to believe with all my heart of the uh, Chicago Mothman. But I think a lot of that is uh, a hype. I believe you may have you may have some real sightings in there. But I think that yeah. is more hype. I, I, I really believe that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just, I, just telling you the truth. I agree. Um, what about, I think you mentioned one at Mothman. I haven't really looked into it. Uh, the Spring Hill Jack. Is that, a, is that a fine entity or is that something different? That was kind of like this creature. Uh, it was more like a humanoid thing that he didn't have wings, but he like we could jump. He jumped really high. Okay. There was another one also, not just Spring Hill Jack. There was another one. It was a Spring Hill creature. In the 1800s, and oh, I forget the I forget the name of it, but I know there was because I looked it up and I even talked about it. But again, like I said, I'm getting kind of old, so <laughs> <laughs> I kind of forget some of these things. That, you know, I think it was in a European country too, and it was a it might have been one of those Czech countries, but it was a uh, I have to look it up and let you know. But I know that there was another one. So. Okay. Um. So what? Uh... How did the Butler Conference go? I remember I never was able to make it. How, how did it go this year? Really well. We have to get you up there. You, you'd really enjoy being up there, Les. Uh, we we had uh, really good attendance, too, especially in, uh, you know, our lockdown state with our governor. And it um, uh, really went well. We had great presentations. Uh, Jamie and Jenny King they knocked it out of the park. Just uh, really good. Everybody, you know, everybody up there gets along. It's 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 a big fun family you know i always say we're we're a big family we're the adams family but we're the we're a big family <laughs> yeah you i the pennsylvania folks you, you definitely tell you guys are in tight knit mm -hmm. i mean i enjoy talking to y'all and hanging out with mm -hmm. y'all it's definitely a fun time every time we do so when uh 
with everything's going on, uh, when do you think the Q meetings are going to start back up? We, uh, as soon as our, our governor is loosening up restrictions, so we think in a couple months we're going to be able to have them open to the public. So um, I'll let you know if you want to come up. Maybe you come up and, because uh, uh, I know people enjoy when you came up and you talked before. So I'll, I'll be letting you know. I would think within a couple months um, that we can, we can put it out to the general public and people can come. So. Um, is, will there be a different... We had to go to a different venue because didn't the uh, didn't the restaurant you used to hold them in? Didn't they tear it down? Oh no, no, the restaurant's Kings Kings Restaurant. It's still there, and actually, oh, I thought actually, I thought they, what's that? I thought they tore it down. That's uh, that's why I was no, wondering. no, no. It's still there. It's still there. Uh, oh, okay. we there's an interesting. We have a couple interesting events on tap, and one I think you'll be really you know, it's called the uh, Paranormal Marketplace. It's August, yep. uh, I think it's August 1st or 2nd. I don't have a calendar. It's the Sunday, first Sunday in, in August. And basically, okay. it's a big paranormal flea market. Well, yeah, send me a link to it because I'd, I'd definitely like to check okay. it out. Okay, and it's free. It's a free event to come to. It's for the general public. We're going to have uh, ghost groups, Bigfoot groups. We're going to have sci-fi, horror, uh, pop culture. And uh, right now, I think we've already got like 40 tables. There's, we, we still have room for more, so if you're interested... Uh, tables are only 20 bucks so it's going to be a free fun event it's unlike like a conference there'll be no speaker so you can stay and talk to anybody you want that's what i think it's unique like because you know at a conference you like you want to talk to this gentleman and there's 10 other people and you got yeah. people talking and this right. you can just talk to them all day i think it's like 11 right. to 5 is and it's uh it's center stage i don't have the address in front of me it's on old broadhead road center stage and i could shoot you a link and maybe you could one one of your other shows you can post it too i hope yeah, you can make this one because people ask about you you know i'll definitely share it um what was i going to say there's something it's just there. actually right down the road from kings you know where kings is yeah we're just yeah go down the road not even a quarter mile on your left it's right there that's where it is so. oh are you going to be at the symposium at, Mar at uh, the fire department where yes Frank yes I will, be, I will be that's one of my favorites yeah okay um i actually i just i picked you up something the other day i was actually at a yard sale <laughs> and i thought me and i thought you would is it you know, godzilla really, is it godzilla are you ready yeah, yeah, sure. you may already may already have it okay but are you yeah. ready oh the special oh, king kong was it king kong versus godzilla oh that's awesome <laughs> that was one of my favorites i love the new one too <laughs> It's a VHS tape. Oh, from that's you. awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. You, as you know, I'm a big Godzilla. I'm a big Godzilla oh, geek. Yeah. Anyone who follows my shit knows I'm a big Godzilla. <laughs> you know. I was going to tell it to you, and I was like, "Well, Fred, Fred's had an event, and if you were going to be there, I and if I, I'm, I'm hoping to make okay. it. Just, just come up and hang out. Um, I'll, I'll bring it up okay. to you. Yeah, because I, Bob keeps asking if I want to put a table. And I told him, I said, Bob, I don't have anything to put at the table. All my stuff right now that, uh, you know, my files and stuff and my casts and stuff like that, they're actually down at the building where the uh, up-and-coming West Virginia Oh, yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm so – I've been sharing their stuff. That's awesome. I'm glad they're doing that. Yeah, they, they sent me pictures of the paintings. I'm hoping to go down – I like I don't know I I got some stuff to do this weekend but I'm hoping to go down sometime next week. Is that in Sutton? Is that in Sutton? Is yeah. it close to the Mothman yeah. Museum or no? You mean the Flatwoods Museum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, probably two two blocks down oh, the road, okay. King Street. That's about yeah, all. I, I, yeah. Well, actually, there's just right beside the museum, the 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 the, the building complex where the museum's yeah, at. Yeah. That's the that's the center core of the town, which is got the uh the uh, courthouse and stuff like that the next street down there it's inside the uh the, uh mount laurel country store is where it's going oh to be. okay that, that's awesome that's awesome I, I have been trying to share likes and trying to put it out to the people too so that's pretty cool i like that they're really they're they're actually pennsylvania folk they're they're originally from pennsylvania from hershey pa oh, okay. that uh once they retired they they decided to move to a small town in West Virginia, and they liked the Sutton area and the Flatwoods area. And that's where they, oh, they that's uh, cool. took up. That's shop. awesome. They bought a building and put the in their little store, and and uh, decided they, when I was there one time, they said, "Hey, we're thinking about a, a Bigfoot museum." I said, well, "I think it'd be great." And so they said, "Well, you want to? Would you be interested in helping us out?" And 
I said, I'll do whatever I can to help out. Cool. I thought it was really, really cool. I'm gonna That's do. cool. Yeah, I like that. That's what you need, different stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Brian, for coming on. He was a great guest. He's very interesting, as always, to talk to you. And I will hope to see you, what is it, June 5th? Is that uh, it is? Sat yeah, Saturday, June 5th. Yeah. Okay. I will I, uh, look forward to seeing you guys there and uh, say hi to Terry for me. And, and uh, it's been fun. Yeah, hey, I, I, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. It was fun. Like, again, you know me. I, I can talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> so I appreciate it. <laughs> I was looking, wait a minute, I'm going to see here if there's any questions for you. Uh, just somebody said something about White Bigfoot. They seen one. Uh, where did they see it? I've heard the story of the White Bigfoots, and it's a great start. I don't know. I don't know what that meant. I mean, I lost what that meant. But any in interesting happenings in Berkeley County? Um, that might be for That's for you. For That's here. for you. It's got to be West Virginia, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Um, see if I have anything for Berkeley County. Uh, right off the, right off the cuff, I don't remember. Can't think of any. Uh, all right, nice show. First time here uh, for Richard. Thank you, Richard. And I seen, seen Robert Solomon in there. Said hey, hey Robert. He said hey to both of us there. Yeah, we said Robert was at the uh, Butler conference. Yep. All right. Well, I don't see any questions. So I think we're good. And I, like I said, I appreciate it. It was a lot of oh, fun. Was. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'll be seeing you soon then. All right. Okay. Have a good night, man. Good night. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Okay, folks. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the, uh, the chat tonight. And we'll see what we can I'm having, I don't have anybody scheduled for next week yet. We'll, we'll see, uh, or I'll see what I can do. I'm going to contact a few folks. And uh, I always like talking to Brian. He, he's a great, he, like I said, he's a wealth of knowledge. And it's always fun. Uh, so next week, or keep keep an eye out for what, who comes on next week, if I can, if I can get somebody scheduled. Uh, and I'll definitely post it up. And until then, I'll see you all later. Good night, folks.